Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Closed Loop Input Impedance of a DC-DC Converter. The outline of this presentation will be as shown here. We will first see an introduction, then we will see how to calculate the closed loop input impedance of a DC-DC converter. We will see an example of calculation and then we will show how to verify the value of the input impedance by LTSPICE simulation. This video is a continuation of this other previous video, LTSPICE number 21, three ways to obtain the input impedance of a DC-DC converter. Also, if you are not familiar with the modeling of DC-DC converters, it's very convenient to watch this other previous video, Power Electronics number 3, Ultrafast Modeling of DC-DC Converters. In the previous video, we talked about the importance of the input impedance of a DC-DC converter because we usually are going to employ EMI filters before the DC-DC converter or another DC-DC converter in cascade and therefore we are going to have an interaction between these different blocks. We can study this interaction as we have seen in the previous video by using this equivalent circuit from which we can obtain this transfer function that relates the voltage at the interface of both blocks with the voltage that is applied by the first stage. And we also said that this is especially important in closed loop operation. So today we are going to see how to calculate the input impedance of a DC-DC converter when it is operating in closed loop and how to check the value of the input impedance by simulation. Here in this slide we can see on the left the actual circuit of the DC-DC converter. Here in red we have the DC-DC converter itself and then we are using in blue this circuitry to do the feedback and the closed loop operation. We know this very well. So from this and um, taking into account the modeling procedure that we have seen in this previous video, Power Electronics number 3, we can obtain in red the small signal circuit of our DC-DC converter. And on this circuit we can also apply, as shown here in blue, the closed loop circuitry. So we are measuring the output voltage, comparing with a reference, we send the information, the error, into the compensator and then with this we generate the duty cycle and this duty cycle is going to be applied to the different elements that depend on the value of the duty cycle, for example, this voltage source here and this current source here. So this is our equivalent circuit in a small signal and in closed loop operation. And from this equivalent circuit, we can calculate the input current and then by obtaining the ratio of the input voltage over input current, we can finally calculate the input impedance. So let's do this in more detail here. We have here our equivalent circuit in closed loop operation. We are not considering now perturbations from the reference, so the perturbation here is equal to zero. And then by analyzing this circuit, we can obtain these four equations very easily. And solving this system of equations, we can obtain finally the input impedance of our converter. So here we have the final expression where we have in red the different elements and in blue we have the transfer function corresponding to the compensator. So this is a general expression that can be used for any transfer function used for the compensator. There are important points for the input impedance of our converter. For example, the input impedance at zero frequency, the DC input impedance. And in this case, if we assume that at zero frequency, the compensator is going to have 
an infinite game, which is the usual situation because we want to have a pole at the origin in order to make null the error at steady state in this kind of applications. So we have this condition here fulfilled. So then by using this condition and applying here frequency equal to zero, then we can obtain this value here for the input impedance at low frequencies. And we can see that this corresponds to a negative value. Is the input voltage, the DC input voltage, divided by the DC value of the duty cycle and divided by the DC value of the output current. And the other relevant point of the input impedance is the value at very high frequencies. So if we analyze this expression, we will obtain that the input impedance is going to tend to infinite. So an important behavior of the converter when it operates in closed loop is that at very low frequencies we are going to have a negative value of the input impedance. We can investigate this a little bit further and justify why we are going to have this value by doing this simple analysis. In our converter we are going to have that Assuming no losses, the input power and the output power are going to be equal. So we have that the product of voltage times current at the input and also at the output is going to be constant. So we can take perturbations here on this expression and then we obtain this other equation from which we can obtain the value of the input impedance as the perturbation on the voltage divided by the perturbation on the current. So we finally obtain this value here. And because the input current in a back converter can be expressed as the duty cycle times the output current, we finally obtain this expression, which corresponds to the value that we have seen in the previous slide. Here is the proof why we have this relation between the input current and the output current, because at the end we have the same power at the input and at the output so we can do like this and because the ratio between the output voltage and input voltage in a back converter operating in continuous conduction mode is equal to the duty cycle we have finally this expression that we can use here so the important point is that we have a negative value of the input impedance and this is so because if we are regulating the output voltage the power here at the output is going to be constant so this means that if we increase for example the input voltage, the input current has to decrease to keep the input power constant and equal to the output power. So this is the reason why we have a negative value of the input impedance at low frequencies. Now let's see an example with this converter that we have used before in the previous video, LTS Spice number 21. And we are implementing the closed loop operation using a simple compensator as shown here is a PI compensator with a pole at zero frequency and then a zero at this frequency omega Z. And we are placing this zero at the same frequency as the resonant frequency of the LC filter of our converter. For more information about how to design this type of compensator, we can also take a look at this video, LTS Spice number 7, Closed Loop Frequency Response of a DC DC Converter. So with these characteristics, we are going to implement the compensator using this circuit here, using an operational amplifier. This is the transfer function, this is the frequency for the zero, and we are selecting this value of the capacitor, 10 nanofarads, and then for the value of the frequency that we have selected, and then we need this value for the resistors R1 and R2. 
Now we can plot the input impedance of our converter operating in closed loop. For this particular case, we have here this script in, in Python with the different parameters here, the output voltage, the DC current through the inductor, which is the same as the DC current at the output. We have the parameters of our compensator. And here we have the transfer function of the input impedance in closed loop. With this statement, we can do the representation. And here we are uh, printing several values of the input impedance at different frequencies. Then here we can see the magnitude of the input impedance in closed loop and the phase of the input impedance. We can see that at very low frequencies we have this value which has a phase of 180 degrees as we have seen before. Here we have the values at the different frequencies for comparison with our simulation. And again, if you are not familiar with WinPython, then you can take a look at these videos, WinPython number one, introduction, and WinPython number three, frequency analysis and body plots. This is the schematic of our back converter. Here we have the converter. Uh, this is similar as in the previous video, LT Spice number 21, but now we are adding the closed loop operation with the compensator, the limiter, and sending this information into the PWM comparator. So again, we are injecting here the signal to inject the perturbation on the input voltage and measuring here the a voltage proportional to the current through the input. This is the same procedure that we have seen in this previous video, so I'm not going to enter into more detail. And then we can see the results in the next slide. So here we have the input impedance obtained from the simulation of the actual circuit. In the solid line here we have the magnitude in dBs and then here we have the phase also of the input impedance and we can check that the values are very similar to those obtained from the theoretical analysis. Of course, when we are getting close to the switching frequency, which in this case is 200 kHz, we start having some noise and these are not, of course, reliable measurements. As we have seen also in this previous video, LT Spice number 21, we can also measure the input impedance using this circuit, which is the average circuit of the back converter operating in continuous conduction mode. So we add here the uh, feedback, the compensator, the limiter, and then we are acting here with this uh, voltage here on the voltage source and on the current source of the converter. We are injecting again a sinusoidal signal here to do the perturbation and measuring the current at this point and the voltage at this point using this equivalent voltage source. And here we have the results of the simulation. So we can see again in the solid line the magnitude of the input impedance and in the discontinuous line we have the phase of the input impedance and also again the values match very well with the theoretical analysis. In this case we are not seeing any effect close to the switching frequency because we are using the average circuit. So we are getting rid of the switching frequency effect. And finally the last possibility to obtain the input impedance of our converter is by using the small signal circuit that we have seen before in previous videos. So again we add the feedback, the compensator, we can even add the limiter, but now we are injecting the perturbation on the voltage source VV using the parameter AC of LT Spice and then we are going to perform an AC analysis on the circuit. 
So what we have to do is to measure the current at this point and obtain the reciprocal value of this current in order to get the input impedance of the converter. We have explained this in this previous video, so please take a look at it in case that you have any doubt. Finally, these are the results that we have obtained from this simulation of the small signal circuit. We are representing, as we have seen, 1 over the voltage proportional to the current. 1 is because what we are injecting as perturbation is 1 volt and divided by the current, so we have the impedance. We can check that the results are the same as we have seen before and they match very well the theoretical analysis and we have here one of the points that we obtained from the WinPython script and we can see that the value is almost the same. Well, this is all today in this presentation. I hope that you find this video useful for you. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.